Hey guys, welcome to Keys Mods. My name is David Fine and today we are going to be talking about one of the largest moths in North America. In fact, I think it is the largest moth in North America. Guys, the giant sphinx. This is a true beast. Guys, we're gonna show, tell you everything we know about the giant sphinx moth. So guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We're gonna show you all kinds of cool stuff about the Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths of the state of Florida. Check it out, guys. All right, guys, let's talk about the giant sphinx moth, Cochidius anteus. It is one of the most impressive moths. I mean, look at the size of this thing compared to some of these other moths. I mean, the, the Faithful Beauty is a pretty large tiger moth, but look how look how big the giant sphinx is compared to the Faithful Beauty. Anyway, um, guys, sexes are, they're dimorphic. The females are much larger than the males. Males have a little bit of, more of a darker coloration on the forewing, but the, the female is just massive. It, this is a massive, massive moth. Uh, I've got some stories about the times when I've actually seen these in the wild, but they've got this really cool little kind of window, kind of translucent window thing on the hind wings. They've got a row of dots on the abdomen. The, the females, guys, you know, imagine flying with a huge bag of eggs. You know, look, look at the size of this abdomen next to my finger. I mean, it's, it's thicker than my finger. It's crazy. So guys, big, huge abdomen. When it's full of eggs, I mean, that, that is an impressive, that is an impressive beast. Okay. Uh, underside there is kind of gray and a little bit bat like anyway. Um, they will feed on pond apple and that's a plant in the Anonacea family. And they might, we might know it as uh, water apple which we have a very common plant in the Everglades here in South Florida. And the caterpillars feed on the new growth of the pond apple. I have a picture of the caterpillar here, guys. So here's the larva of the giant sphinx, final instar caterpillar, big green caterpillar with a kind of got like a pointy head. And then they've got this white band on the back of the body here. And then this kind of like little nodule type of little uh, horn that sticks off off the back. And they, as I said, they feed on pond apple. Uh, I find my caterpillars most commonly in the month of August. And the adults actually fly most commonly in the month of October. So those caterpillars that are emerging or eating in August actually emerge probably most commonly in the month of August. See, the pupa actually is quite interesting as well. Check out this pupa, guys. Here's the pupa. This is actually one that, that got sick and died when I was raising it. So I actually kept the pupa intact. But look at the proboscis chamber on this species. This, this is the head of the pupa. And this is where that big proboscis rests inside of this chamber on the pupa. So cool bug all the way through. Guys, we found them in the Keys on Big Pine Key and in Key Largo. And we found them in the Keys in the months of May, June, and October. It is the largest moth, uh, the, at least the largest wingspan of any moth in the United States. And actually one of the coolest things about this moth is without a doubt, it's incredible proboscis. Check out this one. I actually mounted this female with the proboscis extended. And as you can see, let's see if we can get, do justice to this. As you can see, that proboscis is far, far longer than the length of their entire body. So imagine having a tongue that is longer by far than the entire length of your body. And so that's what this thing has to do. It tucks this thing up. In fact, I got a great image of here how the proboscis is tucked up and curled and hidden underneath the head of the creature. And so they use this to draw nectar from deep-throated flowers, such as angel's trumpet. Uh, so that I've seen them on hibiscus. And there's a couple deep-throated orchid trees, guys. It's an exotic tree. They love nectaring on orchid trees, which uh, is a flower that has a little bit of a deeper throat. Uh, so great moth. Not easy to find. I, I mean, 
They can be common out in the Everglades and probably Fakahatchee Strand in Southwest Florida. Uh, in month of October, adults can be found fairly regularly. But my experience, guys, I'm gonna, let me tell you a little bit about these two specimens here. Guys, these two moths, these two big females, this one right here, I found when I was at, on a soccer field. I was 11 years old in Delray Beach in Palm Beach County, Florida. And it was, I had a night game. My father was the head coach and I was standing there. And as I was standing there where the ball was down the other side of the field, I see this massive, massive moth flying right about chest high off the ground and kind of laboring as it's flying across the field. And so I just, without even thinking twice, sprint across the field, chase this thing about 150 yards into the parking lot, and then swat it down with my hand and captured the moth in the middle of the parking lot. My, my dad, the coach, he wasn't very happy with me, but he did get over it because he said, that's a pretty cool moth, right? Don't ever do it again. But anyway, this one, I was actually at the Lipton tennis tournament in Biscayne Bay, and I'm sitting there. It was actually, uh, we were watching, I believe, uh, Andre Agassi in the like the semifinals or something like that of the tournament. And I saw the moth flying in the lights again at night. And it was just flying, kind of like flying around and around and around and around. I just watched it for about five, ten minutes. And then all of a sudden, it started getting closer and closer to me. And I, I started to get really excited because it's getting closer and closer. And then it lands right in the right on the head of a lady a couple rows in front of me and it's almost like she felt something so she kind of like she kind of did one of these numbers like she didn't know what happened so i get out of my chair i walk over to her and i said hey uh lady don't move a muscle and she starts screaming because she realizes there's something in her hair so i i grab the moth off of her head and just run out the exit uh, she wasn't very happy, but I was happy because I got a new giant sphinx moth. Uh, in fact, these are the only three females that I've ever seen. So uh, great moth, huge, huge specimen, huge species. Uh, even though there are moths with a larger wing area, such as probably the, the black witch or maybe the cecropia moth or something like that. This is definitely has the longest wingspan definitely the longest tongue. So guys, I hope you liked the video on the giant sphinx. It is truly a giant, Cochidius anteus. Uh, if you ever see one, you ever see caterpillars, let me know. I would love to come and take pictures and maybe you know give you a shout out on a video. So I uh, hope you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we'll show you more beauties like the giant sphinx uh, as we go at deeper into the moths of the Florida Keys. And so guys, I also give a shout out to the Lepidoptera Society, the Southern Lepidoptera Society, which is a, a group of men and women that I belong to that study the moths and butterflies of the Southern United States. They have a website, southernlepsoc.org. And I, it's linked in my description. Guys, I, I strongly recommend if you're interested in moths and butterflies in the Southern United States, you know, become a member it's like 35 bucks a year you get some newsletters and get invited to some cool meetings but then we get to talk about really really cool tropical bugs like some of these guys but i hope you like the video guys take care and uh let's enjoy south florida even though this thing might land in your hair guys take care <laughs> let's get out there and enjoy south florida bye now